a gamma ray burst that was dubbed the brightest of all time, so powerful it could have vaporized Earth in an instant, a race against time to spot a distant exoplanet before it disappears behind its star, and an entire galaxy forming in reverse. These are more amazing discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope. Astronomers using the James Webb just made a wild discovery of an exoplanet that almost slipped right through their fingers. Meet AF Leporis B, a young gas giant sitting 5,000 light years away, which is about to disappear behind its parent star, making it incredibly hard to study. So astronomers had to move fast to catch a glimpse of it before it was lost in the light of the star. In 2023, this planet became the lowest mass planet ever discovered beyond our solar system by direct observation. It's about 3.2 times the mass of Jupiter, but it's much younger, only 23 million years old. Sounds ancient, but to put that in perspective, Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. So yeah, this one is just getting started. The James Webb Space Telescope has this cool tool called the coronagraph that helps block out the star's light so it can spot planets, but the closer planets get to its star, the harder it becomes to observe. At its current distance, the coronagraph can block out about 90% of the star's light, but this won't last for long. The team could have waited for you know 25 years until AF Let B came out from behind the star, but that's just way too long to wait, so they had to rush. As Brendan Bowler, one of the astronomers on the team, put it, we really are pushing the instrumentation to its limits here. And in the nick of time, they succeeded. They observed the planet's atmosphere, which was much more active than they expected. They even found more carbon monoxide than anticipated. But more than just what they found, the fact that they found it at all is a big deal. As Bowler says, in the big picture, these data were taken in JWST's second year of operations. It's not just about the planets we know about now, but the ones we'll soon discover. Just the other day, a story came out about the James Webb Space Telescope spotting a galaxy being born inside out. We're used to galaxies starting off as gas clouds that collapse under gravity, but now astronomers have spotted something totally unexpected. A galaxy that's forming from the inside out. Mate Jade's GS plus 53 18343 A 27.79097. It's an unforgettable name, I know, but we'll just uh, call it the inside out galaxy from here on out. Researchers at the University of Cambridge spotted this galaxy, which seems to be forming in reverse. Cambridge's Sandro Tuchella states that most galaxies start as, quote, small as gas clouds and collapse under their own gravity, forming very dense cores of stars and possibly black holes. And then over time, stars start forming in the outer regions. But this inside out galaxy is starting off with a super dense core and the outer regions are growing at a crazy fast pace. Scientists didn't know for sure if this kind of galaxy even existed until now. I'm sure they had some theories and models, but it's one thing to predict something and another to actually see it in action. And thanks to Webb's crazy powerful instruments, they've actually observed this inside out process for the first time. One of the astronomers involved, William Baker, said it's like being able to quote, check your homework before Webb it was all just theory. Just last year, astronomers caught a glimpse of something seriously wild in the universe. An explosion so bright they dubbed it Boat brightest of all time. How do these things happen though? Well, gamma ray bursts occur when a supermassive star basically blows its top, collapses and forms a black hole. But this black hole is so overloaded with all the material it's trying to suck up that it spits out beams of high energy radiation from its poles. Wild. Now, this particular burst was 70 times brighter than anything we've seen before. So bright, in fact, that it literally blinded some of the tools astronomers were using to observe it. And even though this cosmic explosion happened 2 billion light years away, its energy was so intense that if it were much closer, say 100 light years away, it would have vaporized Earth in an instant. TOI 270 is 70 light years away, and it's a terrifying place. It's what's called the Hycean planet. Planets that are mostly ocean, but not like the chill tropical beaches that we love. Instead, imagine a massive boiling ocean that's simmering at temperatures over 100 degrees Celsius, way over the boiling point. This planet is twice the size of Earth with almost five times its mass, and it orbits really close to its star, which means it has a blazing hot surface. It also completes an entire 
entire orbit in just 11 days. Imagine an entire year being 11 days long. Anyway, some scientists think that this planet is entirely covered in a vast boiling hot ocean and some think the surface isn't water at all, but it's actually more like a sweltering hydrogen filled atmosphere. Either way, this planet is just straight up terrible in any scenario, whether it's a boiling ocean or a burning hydrogen atmosphere. Turns out there are free floating black holes roaming through space. Back in February of 2022, scientists discovered the first ever free floating black hole 5,000 light years away, drifting through space at a cool 28 miles per second. How was this thing spotted? Well, black holes are notorious for being black. They don't emit light, they don't reflect it, they suck up anything that gets too close, including light itself. But in this case, they figured it out by looking at something really subtle. The way this black hole deflected light from stars nearby. That tiny little bend in starlight was enough to tip the scientists off. This black hole likely came to be after its parent star exploded in a supernova. And when that happened, the black hole got flung through space at an incredible speed, and now it's out there in the galaxy, just floating around. Scientists think there could be millions of these rogue black holes drifting around in space. Not a very settling thought. WASP-107b is an exoplanet about the size of Jupiter, but only a tenth of its mass, so it's super low density and super inflated, almost like a giant balloon. But what makes this planet even more fascinating is what scientists just discovered about its atmosphere. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, they observed something that had never been seen before, an east-west asymmetry in the planet's atmosphere. The atmosphere on the eastern side of the planet is different from the western side. Matthew Murphy, one of the lead scientists on the study, said this is the first time the east-west asymmetry of any exoplanet has ever been observed as it transits its star from space. Basically, this planet is so far away that most of the time astronomers can't see what's happening on different sides of it, but with the web, they could finally do it. Why does this matter? Well, east-west asymmetry means there are significant differences between the two sides of the planet, and now scientists have the chance to study them in detail. Murphy went on to say, these snapshots tell us a lot about the gases in the exoplanet's atmosphere, the clouds, structure of the atmosphere, the chemistry, and how everything changes when receiving different amounts of sunlight. As Thomas Beatty, a co-author of the study, put it, for almost all exoplanets, we can't even look at them directly directly, let alone be able to know what's going on on one side versus the other. So basically, this is a massive win for Webb and the future study of exoplanets. The James Webb Telescope has made some interesting observations about the Hubble constant. For starters, what exactly is the Hubble constant? Well, imagine the universe as a balloon and it's expanding in all directions. The Hubble constant is like the measurement of how fast that balloon is blowing up. The faster the galaxies are moving away from us, the higher the Hubble constant. And by knowing the rate at which the universe is expanding, we can figure out some pretty important stuff, mainly the age of the universe and what its future might look like. Most models say the Hubble constant should be about 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And now, what in the universe is a megaparsec? A megaparsec is about 3.26 million light years. Well, Webb's observations have thrown up some serious discrepancies. Instead of confirming the old value of 68, some scientists are now saying the constant is closer to 69.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec, and others have even suggested it could be higher than that. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean there's something that we're missing. Maybe our understanding of the universe's expansion needs tweaking, or maybe there's a bigger cosmic mystery that we've yet to uncover. Astronomers recently found the most distant black hole ever seen in x-rays, and it's revealing some pretty wild secrets about the early universe. This black hole is in a galaxy called UHZ1, about 13.2 billion light years away. It's a baby black hole forming just 470 million years after the Big Bang, but it's also a supermassive one. Most supermassive black holes you see today are a tiny fraction of the mass of their host galaxies, but this one is about the same mass as its entire galaxy, which is nuts. How young it is is also a big deal because it could help explain how the first supermassive black holes formed in the universe. The team led by Akos Bogdan from Harvard and Smithsonian used a combination of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and the James Webb to spot it. The black hole's mass is estimated to be 10 to 100 million times the mass of the sun. This suggests that it formed from massive clouds of gas collapsing. So it started out big rather than a smaller black hole that grew 
over time, devouring everything around it. Using the James Webb Space Telescope, scientists peered deep into the past and found carbon dust in 10 different galaxies that were formed just 1 billion years after the Big Bang. For a long time, scientists thought that heavy elements like carbon were made in the hearts of stars, then blown out into space when those stars exploded. Then cosmic dust from the explosion would gradually form into new stars, and eventually galaxies became richer in these elements over billions of years. Basically, it was like the universe slowly and steadily recycling. But the JWST found carbon dust in galaxies that are only 10 million years old a whole lot younger than scientists thought galaxies could be so rich in carbon. 10 million years old is practically brand new in you know, space terms. So how did these young galaxies become so heavy in carbon so quickly? Maybe there's a faster way for stars to form and spread carbon dust than we thought. And just think, if even dust can mess with our understanding of the forming of galaxies, imagine what other mind-bending things there are out there to discover in the vastness of space. And finally, about four months back, James Webb detected a massive collision of two asteroids. This collision happened in the Beta Pictoris system, 63 light years away. And that's a good thing, because just the dust alone from the crash was 100,000 times heavier than the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. Astronomer Christine Chen from Johns Hopkins University has been watching this system for a while. Back in 2004 and 5, she first spotted it using the Spitzer Space Telescope, a 20 million year old system with two gas giants, Beta Pictoris B and C. Fast forward to 2023, and with James Webb now on the scene, the difference is night and day. Webb gives us these super crisp, clear images that let scientists zoom in on even the tiniest of details. So when Chen and her team compared the old and new data, they noticed that two huge dust clouds they'd spotted earlier had mysteriously disappeared. After some investigating, they realized they were looking at the aftermath of a colossal asteroid collision. Chen and her team are calling this one of the first direct pieces of evidence of a collision like this, and it gives us a glimpse into how chaotic and dramatic space can be. All that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.